everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Cubica AMF Seeds of Success podcast. Each week, we will plant knowledge, insights, practical tips, and trends so your center can be a striking success. I am one of the hosts here, Orly. Hi, I'm Dottie. And today we have a special guest, which I am very excited to have on the show. Dottie, I will let you introduce our guest who is with us today. Yes, Orly, we have a very special guest. Uh, a lot of our listeners are going to know him right off the bat by his name. It's John Lacido, who is the proprietor, the owner of Sun Valley Lanes and Games in Lincoln, Nebraska. Hi, John. Hi, Dottie. Hi, Orly. Great to see you both. Very nice to have you, John. You know, John, you have done so much at your bowling center lately. In fact, you're always doing something at your bowling center. Uh, it seems like every time I walk through your door, there's something new. There's something different. Good. That's uh, all we, we try for, actually, Dottie. So that's good. <laughs> Yes. Well, it, it's definitely noticed. I mean, every time there is a little bit different experience, you know, that you get to share in your center. And the the title of our show today is called Time to Rethink. And I know that title kind of sounds a little bit odd. Uh, and, and I also know being in a bowling center, time to think, period, is limited. Yes, of course. But you have done so much in your center. and the, the topic really is, is to talk about before you do anything, before you go in and add a new attraction or add a new piece of equipment, you really have to think that process through to think what all it's going to involve and what all parts of your business it's going to affect, right? Absolutely. You, you must, Dottie. I mean, and if, you know, uh, what's interesting, you're talking about time to rethink that there's two things that are always kind of on my mind. One is change, you know, and thinking about how change affects my business uh, internally, externally, the whole nine yards. And then there's the time to rethink when it comes to if I have any problems to solve. And that mm -hmm. really has been a lot of my focus, I guess, over the years. Uh, you know, is there a problem that I need to solve? And what does that all take to do that? And that's, you know, how I have gone down the path that I have, I guess. So, it's a, it's a yeah. very friendly and good topic to to always have on your radar, I guess. I think it's it's kind of like this doesn't have to do with bowling, but like when you're a young kid and you're getting your first car, you're like, I got a car. But are you thinking of what's going to happen when you need to fix <laughs> something on the car? Are you remembering that you have to put gas in the car? <laughs> you're you right. have to get insurance. So, you know, yeah. when you're getting something new in your center, you got to think about everything and get it ready to go no matter what it is. Yes. Yes. Yes, for sure. And 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 where who it's going to impact? How is it going to impact my flow of business? You know, what employees is it going to impact? Yeah. What do I need to do with my employees? Um, oh. And and you know, all of that comes into play. And it actually help when you take that time before you make those decisions and you put these things in place. It makes the whole process much easier, and it helps you get to that level of success quicker. Absolutely. Um, and, and one of the things that comes to mind recently is something that I guess, you know, we don't really we didn't really stop and think. And a lot of people uh, realize that even something as simple that you, as you said, that is going to solve a problem for you, like a kiosk, yep. um, that it's going to, you know, a kiosk, you're bringing a kiosk into your center. And the idea is that it's going to enhance the experience. Uh, sure. I don't like to think of it as it's going to be self-service because it, it's it's not. It's just allowing you to create a better experience. It's, you're able to create a more personal experience, right? But yeah. that requires a lot of thought beforehand. Yeah, ab absolutely. And it sounds a little bit counterintuitive when you say a personal experience and you're dealing with a kiosk. You're right. right? I think that kiosks are, are cold, you know, units per se, and you use yep. customer service touch. But if done correctly, it does enhance the experience. And in thinking about that, you know, uh, you know, when I looked at the kiosk situation, I thought, okay, you know, how can kiosks help my business and you know improve mm -hmm. the flow either for the staff or for the guest, right? Uh, you know, it's it's a lot along the lines of just basic business principles, right? You're either always trying to make more money or trying to reduce expenses. Exactly. So here, you know, am I trying to make things better for my staff, my team members, or am I trying to make the experience better for the guests? So 
uh, again, you know, pro if done properly, you can actually do a little bit of both of those things, you know, no different than when you operate your business. So, uh, yes, the kiosk, it was a very interesting study for me uh, in the sense of, you know, embracing that technology and utilizing it properly. So um, if I give a little bit of background, I mean, you know, I think all of us instinctively think with a kiosk, my mind immediately went to McDonald's, right? You walk yeah. in, you eat your food, you call it good. Okay, that would help on labor, maybe some, uh, maybe a little bit more convenient for, for guests to order. And, and that was a bit of my mindset at the start. But then it occurred to me, I thought, you know, really... I need to kind of think about this from the guest experience aspect. Right. Just, you know, you know, kind of what's in it for me. Uh, and that was critical in determining the location mm -hmm. where I would use it and then how it would affect my operations. And yes. that's one thing that I think people don't completely deep dive into. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, I mean, I thought I was doing a fairly good job at it. But uh, even I had a couple little surprises of stuff that I thought, oh, yeah, I guess I hadn't thought about that, which is, you know, part of, the, you know, the nature of change, right? But uh, 100 percent. Oh, we yeah. work and, and our kiosks are doing well. So uh, it's just a, it's a learning curve like anything else, right? Right. And, that, and that's not unlike anything else. As I said, it's time, you know, when you're putting something in, it really is time to rethink things. Okay. How am I currently doing business? How is this going to impact the way I need to be doing business? If I let's go back to kiosk as the example, if I have a kiosk here and my my food and beverage orders can be placed here. Uh, OK, what now? What does that mean for my snack bar area? Are my sales going to increase or is it going to take a burden off of my snack bar cashier? If yep. it takes a burden off that cashier. I need to now cross train that person to either help make sure the orders are being prepared properly or take a burden off the, you know, the, the cook. So there's yep. a lot of things that you don't think of unless you really sit down and start thinking flow of business and how incorporating that into your operations is going to matter yes. to, to what you do. I look at, for example, um, uh, you know, and 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 this is this this is just uh, off the top of my head. You have cornhole in your facility, right? Yep. And yep. that's way away from your front desk where anybody is there. And you, it, of course, it opens up onto your patio. But I can almost guarantee you, when you had that concept, you had to really think about how am I going to serve those customers? What yep. what what is going to be the negatives and the positives of putting this in this particular location? And as a result, even like your outdoor volleyball, you have the bar with the facing out there that was mindful. You had to think through that entire process of what that customer would need yep. and how you were going to handle that customer when they got in right. your facility. Correct. And, and when you, you look at it from that side alone, I mean, you're just talking about the customer aspect of it currently. The other part of it becomes the the team member experience, right? Yep. So. When you look at a kiosk, you, you think really there's one of two ways you can do it. Either we can do table service, right? Let them order at the mm -hmm. kiosk and we'll have it delivered to their table. Or you can do pickup service. Well, we were already doing table service in the sense you walked up to my grill uh, or walked mm -hmm. up to the bartender, you ordered your food. We would bring you your food. We, we wouldn't have waitress service. We were this kind of quasi operating model. Yeah. Of it's restaurant, right? But we would bring you your food, make sure you didn't need anything else. Okay, you're good to go. Well, when the kiosk came down the pike and thinking about those two options, well, I didn't want to negatively impact the guest experience of us already bringing our food. We we're already doing it. I didn't see it as a labor problem because those staff members are also tasked with other duties in the facility. Uh, and really, it kind of works out rather well for them to stay busy and, you know, mm -hmm. they can help us through that rush. So that really wasn't a primary goal to me, but more enhancing the guest experience was, right? Yeah. So I thought, okay, we're going to use the kiosk to do this. Uh, I order at the kiosk. Again, I got to put myself into my yeah. you know, shoes. I order my food and I order my soda. How do I get the soda, right? Well, we currently haven't done that in the past. Or in a lot of cases, I'm ordering my food now. I might be thirsty now. I want to, you know, no different than when you go to a restaurant. You sit down, they bring you your, your beverage, 
And then, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes later, they bring you your food, whatever, you know, the case might be. Well, we kind of wanted to try to make sure we could answer that issue as well. So we had to put some mm -hmm. procedures in place, you know, yeah. for the team members to know, okay, it's possible. You see these kiosk orders come in, there's a beverage on there and the customer has a receipt, obviously give them their beverage, right? I mean, we know they've already paid for it and we want them to be satisfied um, even though their food might not be coming for another 20 minutes or whatever the case might be, 40 on Saturday nights, it seems like. But um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, I had not completely thought about that when I, you know, thought of the model of, oh, let's just do a kiosk, right? It's easy. I forget exactly. about a McDonald's, you know, they still give you the cup and then you go self-serve your own soda. Well, not a lot of bowling centers have self-serve soda, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, so again, it's stuff like that that we had to think about. You know, how is it going to impact our operations? Is it, you know, what do we have to task the staff members to change? But the goal was, you know, to try to make it more convenient for people to order. So you, mm -hmm. you hit on it. Uh, you know, my kiosks are placed in such a way in this building. If you're a league bowler, you don't have to walk more than eight lanes to get, you know, a kiosk order in, which on snowy Nebraska winter nights comes in kind of handy, right? 100%. Yeah. You know, to my grill as the case might be. So that's what was one goal. Second was the volleyball players and mm -hmm. that they were satisfied, you know, had access to something as well as the mini golf uh, people and both the volleyball, the mini ball, uh, mini golf people having a quick and easy way to order, which is why the one kiosk is literally located in the building next door, you know, to make it convenient yeah. for them, uh, to order. And then the one is, the other one's right outside my bar, which kind of addresses the cornhole and the bar staffing. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, we still take traditional orders from, our, you know, our bar staff or waitress staff when we have waitresses on. Uh, but the kiosk does kind of control the flow a little bit better for the uh, cashier at the grill. You know, we don't quite get those lines like we used to. I mean, sometimes I would joke, you know, you, you can't order because your turn would already come up, right? I mean, you'd have to have people swapping people out in line because it yeah. was your turn to bowl. And that, you know, that's a negative customer experience for sure. Um, right. So you know, that definitely, uh, that, that definitely solved, you know, that, that pain is, point for you yeah. for sure. Yeah. And, yeah, and we really talked about that. Oh, well, we was gonna say we talked about that last time where, you know, if you're yeah, you're you're in a league and it's your turn or, you know, right after your turn, you go up and you see a couple of people in line, you go jump in line, but it might not be moving as fast as you thought it was going to move. Yeah. Or if you look kiosk, nobody in the kiosk, let me jump over there get it real quick, you know, put your order in, then you're back to your, your lane. So, yeah. And sometimes it results in just not making that sale. I mean, you know, they just say, you know what, the line's just too long. I'm just going to hold off. I'll grab something later. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, definitely. But. But, you know, as I said, the title of the show being time to rethink, I think with really anything that you do to to look at all aspects of it beforehand and look at where you have opportunities to avoid it being a negative situation. So you could have very easily not thought things through and it could have turned out to be a negative experience by not knowing how to handle that customer that wanted that drink ahead of time. Correct. Right. Um, and it could certainly backfire on you if you had not thought everything through. And so I think there's so much value in talking about this today on the show, because we have a lot of centers that are wanting to do things. And we know that we encourage you to do things anytime you add anything or, you know, it's it's even simple things when you add them. The customers do notice. And yes. when you can think it through ahead of time and make sure that you are ready to handle that new piece of equipment or that new attraction in your center from a, and the customer comes in and they have a great experience, then you are setting yourself up for a quicker ROI, for a happier customer, Absolutely. for more, you know, word of mouth advertising, the whole nine yards. But it does require a little bit of, of go lock yourself in a room, go take a drive in a car and just think through how is the customer going to receive what it is that I'm doing in my center? And what can I do to make sure that it's positioned properly from the get-go? Yeah. And and if I can, Daddy, I'm going to share another quick story. You know, thinking yes. about playing, you know, playing it out for the 40, uh, 44, 45 years we've been open or whatever, we've trained our customer to walk in the front door and come right to the reception desk to open bowl, right? Yeah. I mean, doing it for decades and decades and yes. decades. Yes. 
So when the check-in functionality as well as the play now functionality was developed, we quickly looked at that and thought, okay, we have trained our customers to do this forever. We need to start teaching them something new, right? I mean, it's not, not that, you know, my guests don't necessarily believe that I embrace technology. A lot of them know that I embrace technology. Yes. Uh, but even then, you don't necessarily think you're going to walk into a FEC or bowling center or BEC or whatever and think, oh, there's technology that exists to let me check myself in. You don't think that still today because bowling's been around forever. I agree. I mean, so, uh, you know, we we identified that pretty quickly that this was part of the issue. So we just started to do stuff, uh, you know, along the lines of, hey, let's walk in here for the first time. What does that look like? Where are yes. people even aware? Are they, you know, know what's going on? And very simply, we set some stanchions up in our front entrance way that, you know, with a sign right at the top of the first stanchion that says open play reservations uh, or check in here, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, with an arrow pointing towards the kiosk. Yep. Uh, and just something as simple as that caused a dramatic increase in the number of people coming in to check in on the kiosk or, you know, do play now on the kiosk. Uh, but I had to, you know, take a step back. It's not like the, the kiosk didn't work per se. It's the mental, I guess, state that customers were coming into the building with that, you know, we had to all of a sudden address and say, oh, yeah, we have this technology. We need to make you aware of it. And then, you know, make it easy and painless for you to use. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of some of the stuff we learned. And it was just something as simple as that helped improve things. So, uh, you know, when it comes to signage and making people aware and, and making sure your reservation confirmation spells it out in big, bold letters. Exactly. Time when you check in, use our kiosk upon arrival, uh, you know, the, the desk staff, they appreciate the fact that, you know, oh, yeah, we know these people are here. Uh, oh, look, there's actually shoe sizes in here. They filled out their shoes. And That's we know right. That every, you know, not every reservation is going to know their shoe sizes. You know, I'm going to come out with a gang of buddies. I'm going to know my shoe size. I might not know any of theirs. Uh, yeah. And it's okay. I mean, you know, we we don't expect it to answer every single problem, you know, and do all our work for us. But it does help make things easier, especially, you know, when it's the family coming. Mom knows the size of the shoes. Of the course. Um, moms, moms are amazing by, by nature anyway. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it helps make that flow much better when, you know, guests just come in, they scan, they're here. We know they walk up to the desk, we got their shoes ready. Oh, you're going to lane 26. Uh, do you need anything? Here's a sizing ball. Uh, you're ready to go. Right. And yes, it, I mean, it just makes that experience that much better. But again, it's technology that didn't exist before. And we, we had to embrace it in a different way other than, you know, just, hey, here's a kiosk. That, yes. That and, and you know, Joan, I'm going to throw something out there. You have a great staff. Um, I've had the opportunity of working with your staff many times. And, and I've told you many times before that you're blessed because you have great yeah, people at I your am. facility. But I also know that it's really important that you think about how something like that, bringing something new into your facility how that might be perceived by your staff if you aren't very uh, uh, clear with what you're doing and the expectations that you have of that new attraction or the kiosk or whatever, you know, it might be very easy for the staff member to feel almost threatened in some cases of, gosh, you know, Th this kiosk is coming in and it's going to start checking in reservations or it's going to start taking food and beverage orders. How's that going to impact me? And you might be getting resistance simply because they aren't aware. So you have to think through that whole process too. How does my employee feel about it? Yes. We, and we, of course, you know, we've had the kiosk since day one, right? And of course, there's been a whole bunch of you know, advancements and improvements into the kiosk functionality and technology. And as those things have become available, you know, we've seen the release notes about stuff. We immediately, you know, besides bringing all our management or all our management team knows what's going on. As soon as I get them, they get them because again, it's about sharing information, right? Communication right. alleviates 90% of the problems in your bowling center. Trust me. 100%. Um, it just Don't is what it is. Don't hold on to it. Uh, Don't right. be the gatekeeper. Communicate, communicate. communicate. Uh, and then, you know, we will ask them to work with the desk teams or the grill team uh, or the attractions team to, you know, kind of say, hey, this is new. This is what's going on. Tell us what you think. Does this work? Does this not work? Why doesn't it work? 
what was good, what was bad, uh, and, and making sure that we incorporate them into this. I mean, it's right down to the frontline level employee. That That's important, too, because if they don't embrace it, it's going to fail. I mean, right. I mean, I can't be here 24 hours a day. I'm here a lot, but not 24. <laughs> um, so, you know, you got to make sure that everybody buys in. And the way to do that is to get feedback and say, you know, what worked, what doesn't work. We actually, uh, as odd as this sounds, we will disable our kiosks during big high school championships here because we found that it was too convenient for people to jump the line Um which sounds counterintuitive, right? You're thinking, well, it's kind of that the purpose of the kiosk. Uh, it's because normally those events occur when we don't have enough staff because a bunch of the staff are bowling in the tournaments. Because oh my goodness! Kids, right, college kids. So we can't operate on full, you know, full bore potential and you know make things in a sense a bit you know easier. But the customer, I mean, it's not been a problem. It's just the fact of, you know, mom and dad can stand in line during that event, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when we do it. So uh, because it was, we didn't have enough staff to be able to deliver food properly and to do it. So it was actually inadvertently hurting my guest experience. So very simply in the cloud, we shut it off for four hours and or six yeah. hours, and, you know, yeah. and we, you know, on, you we said, back to normal. You said something really interesting that you you had to stop and you let your staff give you feedback. Um, so, you know, time to rethink isn't just before you get a product. You really need to stop and be evaluating what's going on and the processes and the fact that you did reach out to your employees and you're seeking that feedback. Yeah. Um, that's key. Yeah. Um, number one, it gets their buy in. If you put in a in a, a kiosk and, and they don't understand it or they don't support it or whatever, you're never going to have them want to help you drive business to it or an attraction that they yeah. don't want. They're not going to ever promote it to a to a customer. So that, I think, is also key is to oh, rethink it periodically. You know, absolutely. You, you nailed it, Dottie. I mean, they, they have to be a part of it also because otherwise it'll fail. All Even if it's the best product ever, if your team doesn't buy into it, it it's going to fail. So you got to make sure you have their support and involvement. And again, you know, some of those, you know, that feedback of that situation from the first high school tournament that all of a sudden it was a problem. Okay, that makes sense. We, we need to shut it off. So, um, you know, uh, I, any piece of technology is not a solution for every single situation. You're it's right. I mean, just not. It doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means that it just doesn't work in that situation. And we have these very unusual situations where, okay, the kiosk is it doesn't work for our for our flow. That's okay. We turn them right back on and you know go right back to normal. So that's right. It's you know it doesn't mean that it's a failure by any imagination. And the other thing that I I want to address because this this is something that I think is is really important. You know, we are, as a bowling community, we are very traditional in the fact that we've always done things for, for years and years and years. We've done things a specific way, right? We've, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm doing air quotes here. We've trained customers a certain way. We've trained yeah. them that we're, you know, we, we don't have lanes available on certain nights because we're full with league. We've trained them to, to go through this process to place their orders. So uh, when when certain things are introduced in a center, we do have to be fair and understand that they may even feel threatened or they may not adopt it unless we take that extra time to make sure that we are letting them know what's going on and what's important. And I will say, since we are talking a lot about kiosk here, sometimes you have to be very mindful that a customer might think of that as this means my service is now going to be all automated and I'm not, I'm going to lose that. But I like going up and talking to, to, to Brian at the front desk. And yeah. I like going to the bar and placing my order. What they don't quite understand is this is going to give more of that personal attention to them, right? Yes. They're not going to be having to do something that can be now done on a machine. They're yeah. now going to be able to do something and have conversations and give that experience that a machine can't. Correct. And and there are guests that just want to use a kiosk. There are people that just don't want to necessarily interact with somebody and would just rather take their time on the screen, look at their options, call it good. 
Okay, that's okay. That's a, this is a perfect solution for them. That base also allows that team member to not be stressed out while they take their time and, you know, figure it out and talk to their kids that are standing next to them. What do you want? You know, those type of things. So there is, you know, an inadvertent, you know, relief on the staff. So again, it's about perception, Dottie, right? I mean, you can look at this situation and say, yeah, you know, you're losing that, that touch, but uh, some of your guests, you're actually making it better. Uh, and, and invariably more than you realize, because, uh, you know, it's less, it, it frees up some demands on all the team members uh, in some way, shape or form. It could be that staff member that's usually at the front desk instead of them being tied up nonstop. Now they might have time to go down to the actual lanes and Hey guys, how's it going? You know, yeah. it's not like they're going to go hide in the office while they're, while, you know, they're not taking orders. They might gonna... try early. They might try. But you're <laughs> right. Right. We're going to make sure that they, <laughs> they try to stay out there. Yes, you're or, correct. Or, I mean, or or it lets them do that little bit better interaction of when they're getting their shoes. Hey, I see you got yeah. you know, a couple of kids. Oh, this is good, right? They're not feeling the pressure because they've got, you know, eight people in line behind them because it's it's kind of controlling the flow a little bit better. Yep. And you know what? I mean, today that's huge because the the staffing shortage that we've been seeing out there, when you can ease that burden on your existing staff. Yeah and you can make their job more enjoyable, it is a known that they deliver better service when they're happier, right? Absolutely. And this is definitely part of that, being able to take that pressure off of them. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna throw something else out there, and I know we're running short on time here, but I gotta throw this out there because I, I just had a conversation with a customer the other day, and I said, yeah, that gets a monkey off your back. So, you know, when a customer is going to the, the kiosk and they're placing their orders, right? And they're choosing this option and this option and this option. And it's made exactly like they've ordered it. And they're picking it up from the window. And they're like, but wait a minute, I didn't want tomatoes. Well, at least that conversation is much different because now they can't yell at the person at the front <laughs> that took the order because guess what? They yeah. Been, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it changes yes. the whole dynamics of that. Yes, you're still going to make that customer happy. And yes, you're going to still do what you need to do. But it definitely diffuses that customer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it goes, makes and, it a lot better situation. Yeah. And, and it goes back back to what you were saying, John, about, you know, or we were saying how like some people are going to miss that interaction. We have to be honest. There's some people that don't want to, in, like <laughs> customers right. that don't want to interact with the staff. They just want to, let me go get my order. I don't want to talk to somebody where I'm, you know, I live in the Midwest also. And, you know, I go to the grocery store and you get some cashiers that are like, oh, these pizzas are so good. Have you had them before? I'm like, yeah. And then your next thing, oh, these chicken tenders are so good. I bought these for my grandkids. And like, I'm like that. I like to talk. I'll be there all day. And my wife's kind of like, what's taking you so long? And I always joke. And I say, well, we're invited to a wedding and a birthday party next week. Because I like to talk to people. But then again, there's people that maybe don't want to deal with somebody that, you know, maybe they have a baby that's crying or they're feeding their baby. So they just yeah. want to go do their own order. So yeah, it goes both ways when it comes to that. And, and maybe some just don't want you to know how much they're ordering either. Yeah. <laughs> that's true too <laughs> well john this has been so good i mean i think that you are the king when it comes to thinking your business through and it's quite obvious by the operation that you run okay. um and so it's always a pleasure for me i get to experience your center as a customer um, and so I can tell you firsthand that the experience that I have when I come in your center, Orly, you've been there too. I'm sure you can. Yeah, can it's attest awesome. I love that, that place. Yep. Um, and and it's because you are thinking things through. You are very mindful of all the things that need to be going on in the background to make sure that when you introduce something new to your to your staff or to your customers that you are being as successful out of the gate as you possibly can. And then you're realigning as you go. Yep, as we go. That's right. Um, and that's okay. That's yes. part of growing. Absolutely. You know, no, no, nobody hits a home run at every single at bat. Just doesn't no. happen, right? But if you can get those singles and doubles when you need to, and then, you know, you'll get up to bat and get that, you know, triple or home run when you can. Uh, absolutely it's, it's, it's all right it's it's, it's a uh, movement in the right direction absolutely well john we really appreciate you being our guest uh i know you've joined us uh on other platforms that we have and it's always your you uh just have a great business and your your mindset and uh you, you definitely know that we need to be meeting our customers and our employees for that matter where they're at 
Uh, and you do a very good job at doing that. So thank you thank very you much for, for being our Appreciate guest. Yeah, and thanks listeners, for having me, Orly. Thank you as well. Yep, really thank you. Listeners, we really, um, we appreciate you listening to us today. And, you know, our goal is to throw out these little tips of things that we think that if we throw the idea out, you can, you can run with it, right? You, all of our listeners are very smart um, operators. And, but sometimes we get really busy with what we do and we forget some of these little things. So Orly and I's purpose in life is to throw things out, to bring guests in that, have really done an outstanding job with certain things and to give you the tools and the resources to open up your mind and be as successful as you can possibly be. So thank you very much for allowing Orly and I that opportunity to plant these little seeds. It's your job to, to water them and nurture them and help them to grow. Uh, but the more seeds that we plant, the better opportunity we have for, for growing a crop, right? So thank you very much, listeners. Thanks again, John, for being on our show. Orly, uh, it's always good to have you as our co-host here. Uh, we, we are dangerous together, and I think our listeners know that now. But our listeners, if you have not had the opportunity to share our podcast, please do so. You never know if there's going to be one or two things that reach your employees that might help you run a better business. So uh, please, please share that we do have this podcast. We're on all major platforms. So please uh, let your employees know about it. So until next time, we want you to keep making bowling amazing and keep growing your bottom line. Have a great afternoon, everybody.